they are entrepreneurs so good? Because precisely they don't think too much. They just do it. The more you will think about it, the more you will get scared. Don't think too much. Raise the level of ambition. A competitiveness is about a high level of ambition for yourself, for your colleagues, and for the company. And the master in ambition was Salvador Dali, the Spanish painter who one day said the following. At the age of six, I wanted to be a cook. At the age of, ooh, at the age of seven, I wanted to be Napoleon. And since then, my ambition has grown steadily. <laughs> ambition is good for you. Risk is good for you also. And this is Thomas Fuller. This is an English writer. Nobody has ever heard of him, so you can relax. <laughs> he wrote some proverb, and one of the proverbs he wrote was extremely good for us because he said the following. This is old English. He said, you know, he that is too secure is not safe. And I think this is very profound. If you want to avoid risk at all cost, you take more risk than anything else. So risk is good for you and should be kept that way. And then we are competing with value system. I think this is very important. And something which happened, which is quite interesting, is that there was um, a Gallup opinion poll for our Chinese friends and asking our ch friends in China, actually, uh, what do you want? What are the key words which reflect best your value system? And then we got the following answer. 68% of the Chinese said, work hard and get rich. Work hard and get rich. Imagine the power and competitiveness of such a value system. Work hard and get rich. And ladies and gentlemen, I would suggest the following. When you are back home, call your children and tell them, come here, I have to talk to you. <laughs> I have heard in this very interesting conference that our Chinese friends have as a value system, work hard and get rich. My son, my daughter, do you recognize yourself in this value system? <laughs> and they will look at you and they say, well, actually, if you really want to know, you can happily forget about the first part of the sentence, <laughs> which is totally uninteresting and go immediately to the essential, get rich. <laughs> if we can get rich without working, it's perfect. And look at the role model today. Rock stars, football stars, even in business, YouTube, Skype, becoming a billionaire without really trying. This is a new model in attitudes, very striking. Now you are shocked and you say, I'm going to take the younger ones. Take the younger ones and say, listen, your older sister and brother said that they didn't want even to work out, they just want to get rich. What about you? And the younger generation is going to look at you and they're going to say, actually, I'm not even interested in getting rich. And you will say, what? My son, what my daughter? You don't want to work hard, you don't want to make money, you don't want to buy your own house. And they will look at you and they say, why, mommy, why, daddy, do you want me to work hard like an idiot to buy my own house? Why? You have already done it. <laughs> All I have to do is just to wait. <laughs> we have a wait and see generation. That's very difficult. Same story happened in companies, by the way. If you look at your life in a company, you could say your working life is going to be about 45 years. If you are lucky enough and your pension fund collapse, you can work longer. <laughs> but you enter your working life, you are a tiger, you are aggressive, you are work, get rich attitudes, you are mobile, you want to get everything in the company, kill everything that moves. You are motivated by company achievement. You want to have work and success. But after a certain time in the company, you transform yourself because you get married, you get children. And then from a tiger, you transform yourself into a cat. <laughs> Still mobile, but during the weekend, you want to be back home. You want to see the family. You are motivated by social achievement. You are motivated by work-life balance. And after a certain time in the company, another transformation occurs. <laughs> and you transform yourself into something else. 
And then you tell everybody, I have been there long enough. Don't talk to me about the company strategy anymore. I don't care. <laughs> Leave me alone. Forget about me. I want personal achievement. I am motivated by life-life balance. <laughs> You have to do the right thing at the right moment. This is a, a picture. This was in the US when you had the Tennessee Valley Adjustment, the grid works. This is a dam. And then you have on the left here, you have the water, the dam, the chief engineer in the middle, and the chief engineer is telling his colleagues, on the other side, the water is supposed to be on the other side. <laughs> I don't know how they solve the problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, Robert Kennedy gave the best definition about competitiveness that I know. He said, you know, some people see things as they are, and they always ask the question, why? And other people are dreaming of things that never were, and they always ask the question, why not? Competitiveness is a why not attitude. Why don't we do it? Why don't we try it? Why is it impossible? That is the name of the game. And if you succeed in doing so, then you will be according to uh, President Reagan's world. I just have a Democrat and a Republican to keep the balance. <laughs> Who said one day there are three kinds of people in life? Number one, those who let it happen. Number two, those who make it happen. And number three, and number three, ooh, those will wonder what happened. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We, we do have time for questions. If anyone wants to ask a question, where would you start? Does anyone want to ask a question? Observation, perhaps. They are still under the shock, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what happened. <laughs> if not, then we will conclude and thank you once again for thank a fantastic so presentation. You met our expectations, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it's the way you talk about economic theory in an understandable, humorous, and layman's terms. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you.